<laughs> what up, people? You know, Dan, you were right. <laughs> Hi, Gerard. Uh, just enjoying life. Hi, how's it going there? P What's up? P good? Who, who's coming on the podcast today? First yeah. of all, we're recording. Sherrod and um, your friend Diana Taylor that you were invited. And Where is she? She's not here yet because we're going to get some alone time with Sherrod. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay, well, I love Sherrod, even though he dissed the comedy seller on Instagram. Are we started? Okay, do the introduction. Do the introduction. Do the Wait, let him introduce you. Go ahead. Uh, I do an intro. Sherrod's going to knock your socks off. Here we go. <laughs> this is the man who needs an introduction. <laughs> this is live from the table, the official podcast of New York's world famous comedy seller, coming at you on Sirius XM 99, Raw Dog. And on the Laugh Button Podcast Network, we have with us today, this is Dan Natterman, of course. Uh, Noam Dorman is here, as always, the owner of the comedy seller, Perial Ashen Brand, and our dear friend, who has not joined us for a while, Mr. Sherrod Small. Yes! Writer, actor, producer, radio personality, all-around performer, uh, a veteran of numerous TV appearances, comedy regular, and host of the popular podcast, Race Wars. Welcome, Sherrod, to our program. Thank you, Natty. Yes, Natto. I promised you an introduction, and I delivered. I mean, you delivered, man. That was a spin move, a shake, and a dunk. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I aspire to. Um, we would like to uh, get into, uh, well, there's so much going on in the world of comedy. There's the Patrice documentary that recently yes. on Comedy Central. And, of course, there's a, the controversy regarding Michael Shea and a joke that he made on SNL. No, and where should we go first? It's up to Let's you, go to Patrice. No, Fine. no, he barely knew Patrice. Patrice, Patrice. <laughs> well, but, okay, let's just to review. Patrice O'Neill was a beloved comic who died about 10 years ago. Yes, we and love him. Recently, this there was a Comedy Central documentary all about him. I will admit to not have, having been close to uh, Patrice, but always enjoyed it. Hey, by the way, it. that broke his heart. You may not know that. It did break his heart. That funeral <laughs> thing you said was funny as hell, though. Uh, well, it's true, and I've said that on the show before. What I said, hey. what I said was, is that I didn't go to Patrice's. I wanted to go to Patrice's funeral because it's the funeral of a, you know, a comedian funeral is always going to be interesting, and there's going to be famous people there. They're going to say interesting things. But I just didn't feel it was. I didn't know the guy that well, and I just imagined Patrice looking down and saying, "That." <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I didn't go for that reason. I felt out of respect. Out of respect, I didn't go. That's why I had to call the Comedy Cellar and Comedy Central out, because they know they barely tolerated Patrice when he was alive. Hold on a second. Why are you calling the Comedy Cellar out? What, what, what did I have? To, I didn't do that documentary. No, he was barely there in those days. He was still uh, Mr. Hold Captain on a second. Law. One thing at a time. I'll get to that, and I agree with you. But I had nothing to do with the documentary. I oh, no, well, that was the documentary. The documentary was great. I thought it was great. I just thought more black people should have been in it. But I thought it was good. But what do you mean? But, but how can you call the comedy seller out for? We didn't put ourselves in the documentary. They put I it know, in. but somebody had to mention it. And why not me from oh, all okay. the sidelines? <laughs> <laughs> So, so the truth is that that um that we had, we had a difficult uh, time with Patrice for a number of reasons, but I'll start at the end first. Patrice and I uh, had a nice relationship toward the end, but he was already kind of hitting it big, and he wasn't really interested in doing clubs at that time. I don't know if you remember the last year or two, he really didn't do much. much uh, but it wasn't just about performing on the stage. I remember the last years, Patrice would just drive up in his truck and not even come inside. Because he thought he wasn't treated right in there. No, no, but at the very end, he did start. He, he, did, he did start coming inside. I, I um, had a conversation with him. It was one of those. It was one of those Opie and Anthony shows that he destroyed. I don't know if you remember there. Uh -huh. And I had a chance, and I, and I told him. I mean, the thing was that he had a thing with my father because he was, uh, he was extremely nasty to my father. For, not nasty is the wrong word. He was trying to be funny, but he, but he uh, humiliated my father in front of a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and uh, that was that was you know that that really that pissed but, but Patrice. Off. But everybody knows this about Patrice. He only humiliated the people he loved. No, no, I was sorry. You know, he, he that actually was unforgivable to Esty. Not my father, although it bothered him. He knew enough to just let it go, no matter how much it bothered him. It made him, him but, one of us. Yeah, it made him one of us. But it really bothered him. But yeah, but <laughs> Esty. <laughs> But SD never forgave him. But 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 really, <laughs> but really, Sherrod, More importantly than that. Um, without any regard to Patrice's uh, formidable talents and um, you know all the all the uh, things he had going for him, he was a very erratic, dangerous act who was capable of of uh, just torching the room. He threw a chair one time. He he'd be um, 
He would just, you know, take a flamethrower to the show and, no. um, you know. No, I, I was that, there when yeah. Kevin Brennan and Greg, I broke up the Kevin Brennan, Greg Rogel fight in the hallway. That those are, those are, over. First of all, those are white they people. They still had spots the next week. Yeah, they were white. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking week. about, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, um, to, I don't care if Patrice had fights, obviously. I'm talking about, I'm, fights. I'm talking about um, to the audience. I'm talking about doing a, you know, he would, he would literally go off on the audience um, if he felt like it. He didn't give a shit. And it was very, it, it was disrespectful. I mean, this is, they brought this out in the documentary. I mean, I'm not the only person to say this. It doesn't mean I didn't like the guy, but he had a thing where he, he just, if he felt like it, he would just trash the place. I don't but know. But I think when Patrice did it, it was always out of something that was pr pretty honest. I think I've yes, of course it was honest. I've seen yeah. other comedians do it just out of anger. Yeah, but Sharon, I'm going to tell you something you don't know about Jewish people. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this. We're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in business to make money. <laughs> and, and and it was it was it was difficult because in the end the customers came for us. I don't mean Patrice was banned or anything, but it was just, you know, like it, it was difficult with him because you didn't know what what could happen that would be damaging to the business and and um but that's where it was and that, that got better over the years and as i said i it ended nicely with him and but you're right we were not his home club i think he liked to hang out in the olive tree but we we had a rocky relationship with him if they had interviewed me i would have said exactly that you know me i wouldn't have ever pretended i kept it 100 though didn't i i kept it 100 on instagram <laughs> but you, you did can I just uh, Go ahead, yeah. relate my, I don't have many memories of Patrice at the Comedy Cellar, because as you said, it wasn't his home club. Um, but one memory I do have is, and there was a waitress, I forgot her name, let's say it was Amy. It wasn't, but let's say it was. And she was, she was wearing a belly shirt and her flab was coming out from under the shirt. And Patrice was sitting at the comedy table and he goes, Amy got, Amy got a belly. And, it, and it's, it's, you know what, it's turning me on. <laughs> I don't know what it is. That belly is turning me on. And we were all laughing, of course, including the waitress in question, who I've named Amy. But anyway, that's my, uh, my Patrice memory. He, he was real. He was kept <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> but, um, I mean, when Patrice felt like it, he would destroy, you know. Yes. I mean, this yeah. guy, this guy, but he didn't care sometimes. A lot of the time, he didn't, you know. He, but even he, him care, not caring, I think, was some of the greatest sets of all time. No, <laughs> I, I disagree. No, they could. Some of them could have been, but other times he'd be, he would. It would be, um, you know, belligerent. We know because that. he was one of those guys who were really. He was really in the moment. So if yeah. he thought he struck a nerve, he was going to go to that nerve. He wasn't going to avoid it or do some hat joke and say, "Hey, the waitstaff, uh, tip him." He ain't going to do that dumb shit. He was going to go and stay on that nerve, and it made people uncomfortable. I get that. Oh, okay. by the way, oh, by the way, that's one of his pet peeves. He hates when comics say tip the waitstaff. Yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only thing worse than tip the waitstaff is support live. Thank you for supporting live <laughs> comedy. It's like we're charity cases. You know, yeah, I like just, we make a wish, kids. Yeah. No, you come here if you want to come here. If you don't want to come here, do not come. <laughs> do not right. support live comedy because we need money. Support it because you want to support it. We're, you know. Speaking of live comedy, I just finished a show, the 3 p.m. show at the Comedy Cellar tonight. Oh, the Mint Show is the Black History Month special show. I did the Mint Show. I did a whole bunch of Black History jokes, Dan. You'd be proud of me. Well, I certainly would be. Because if you don't know your history, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're going. I had to bring up Chris Fitz Addicts. He was just, he's more than just a black dude who got shot. Although he, he had a whole life. <laughs> well, he was the first person or the first? He, he was shot man. at Lexington and Concord, right? No, he was shot at Boston, like uh, Boston, Boston, Boston Massacre. Boston Massacre. Right in front of the state building. Yeah. But he was half uh african-american and he was half native his mother was a native when he uh he uh he escaped of uh, like 27 he ran away joined uh he became a whaler he was uh one of a whaler and uh he worked on trade boats because a whaler was the only uh, uh occupation in the colonies where black man wasn't judged for being black you was only judged by your experience and your time there so a lot of you know ex-slaves and runaways and free uh blacks did uh was whalers if you could throw a harpoon, they don't care what color you are. Yeah, that's how, that's how much the white man scared him, that he would rather kill the biggest beast that was ever on the planet with a stick and a spear than deal with Whitey and his aggression. Why, Whitey is a bit much. Well, Whitey is a bit much. Well, he, the, the big wheel's the other Whitey, you know? 
That's right. That's right. Moby Dick. Yes, he was. Um, yes, and of course, Moby Dick. Remember Queequeg, who I don't know if he was black or native or whatever he was, but anyway, sure. I don't want to get too, too into literature here. But um, Chris McAddix, <laughs> uh, we remember him today. Yes, and he was shot. And they say in the paper, first of all, for when he ran away, they didn't say a runaway African slave. They said uh, a mulatto fellow. That's how they described him. Mulatto. A mulatto fellow. And, uh, well, that, was, that was an acceptable yeah. word. That was an acceptable word until very recently. Mulatto was never. Yeah, but that's how they mostly describe uh, uh, children between natives and Africans as mulattoes. I and see. Plus, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, then well, he was. How did uh, this, how did this, who else was on the show? Uh, show? It was all. It was an all African American show. Yeah, it was all the blacks and the blacks. That's how they did it. <laughs> it was. Uh, who else was on the show? Seton Smith was on the show, and Artie Fuqua, and Tony Woods, and Monroe Martin. And I'm call that black seller, you know, like there's black Twitter. Yeah, they call the barbecue night in this comedy cell. <laughs> was it was it a good show? It was a great show, great show. Uh, Mah uh, Mustafa was happy. It was Mustafa show with men comedy, so he was happy, and everything went great. Oh, I'm glad. Yes, I like how you staying away though, uh, just in case charges come through from Cuomo. No, I'm never been around. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. I know. <laughs> well, no. It, look, it's not my show, and um, and I, <laughs> I, and I, and you're right. I didn't, I didn't want to be uh, involved. I mean, there's this. They're they're allowed to do it because you're allowed to do live, uh, um, uh, broadcasting, whatever it is, whatever the whatever the law is. If they so, test everybody, so every, yeah, everybody got tested. I still got my green band on. Everybody so I had, I, I had them. I had their lawyer. They got a, a a hotshot lawyer who went through the whole thing with me and why it was legal. Jewish. And um, I said, well, okay, fine. Jewish they can lawyer. use they, Jew, of course. Okay. And uh, <laughs> and uh, then I and I, I let them have the room for. I'm not involved in the the. I don't make any money or anything. I'm not involved. In <laughs> like how you separate yourself even more from. <laughs> I do not. You, it's exactly. I don't want any part you of it. Have to create an LLC just to do. <laughs> <laughs> you do benefit, I guess, from some publicity, I suppose. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the truth is, I just don't. I, I I love Mustafa, and I don't want to say no. Uh, uh, but that's it. But they ran it tight, though. It was a tight ship. Everybody got tested at at the beginning. They kept you in a little waiting area before you got to mingle again with everybody else. But I don't like stuff stuck on my nose. I don't like anything stuck that deep up my nose unless it's a Coke straw. Oh, Sherrod. Come on. Uh, have you gotten the vaccine, Sherrod? Uh, no, I didn't get the vaccine yet. You are you going to? Are you, are you, are you going to? Uh, when I go, I'm going where all the white people go. I'm not going to the Harlem truck. No, in all Nobody. seriousness, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, though, do you, do you have any misgivings about the vaccine? Because that's uh, a big issue. No, you don't. No, you know. Yeah. But, I, you know, I might tease in and bring up the every I mean, now. If it's any consolation, the guy that, if this helps at all in terms of the black communities, uh, trust in the vaccine. It was it was invented by a Turkish guy, not yeah, not, Turkish really, not really a white guy per se. So I don't know if that. Holy helps shit! I now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't it? The Moderna, I believe that. Elizabeth is the big one. <laughs> Pfizer. <with> the, <laughs> I heard it came in a falafel. <laughs> Stuxnet. Stuxnet. Now oh, we're okay. sure I should have got more. So, so um, I do want to get to. Uh, Che at some point. I don't know how we want to, I only, and I only bring it up because we That anti-Semite? <laughs> well, I also want to talk about Mike Pesco, you know, who's a friend of our, friend of this show, a friend of mine, uh, got fired at Slate or indefinitely suspended at Slate for, so Sharad and I were arguing, not arguing about this actually, I think Sharad kind of agreed with me about this, this guy, at the time, no, this, a couple weeks ago, this guy at the Times, McNeil, got fired for saying the N-word when someone had asked him a question with the where they said the n-word to him and he repeated it back in the question and they fired him for that and um which you know uh i, I disagree with it. i think i think sharad even disagreed with it. so yes it's silly yeah. it's silly yeah what so then I so then but now it gets worse so now this so mike pesca who let me tell you about mike pesca he is a clearly left of center i, I don't think he's far left at all but he's a very very mainstream Democrat. He is, doesn't share any positions with me on any of the conservative nutty things that I believe, whatever it is. I mean, this guy is a, um, he, he's a tr try, he, he, he moderates uh, democratic debates that he's during. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, he went on a Slack channel, apparently, at Slate, where he works. He does a podcast there called The Gist. He did for like seven years. Very popular podcast and respected podcast. And he said he thought, essentially, that what happened to McNeil was unfair and that people ought to be able to say the word when they're referring to it or quoting it or discussing it. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm putting words in his mouth. You can read online what's there. And they fired him for that. He didn't even say <laughs> wow. the word. They fired him for the wow. opinion. They fired him for the That's fucking ridiculous. opinion. And it's come to that. Who fired him? Other white people. Yeah, well, well some, somebody black did complain. Um, but uh, I'm sure it was mostly white people. Well, what black person complain about that? That he's, why would that? That's just dumb. And I, and I, and when I, you I, can't even bring up the word, or you can't even say somebody else has the right to say the word when they're discussing the word. That's when we get out of control. It's like we talk about malice when you throw this word around. Not just saying it. Sharon, could I, on a related wait, note, wait, ask wait, wait. Can, I, can I finish one more thing? Or, you, or, or let me just say, bring it up now. Because we have, we have the uh, Diana Taylor coming, so we don't okay. have all the time in the world. Well, I just want to say the one thing about this comment. I want to give it to Sharon. So the, the black guy at, uh, who um, was in the story at Slate said the following. Wait, is this? Maybe I, maybe I misread it. I'm not sure this is the black, the black person. I think it is though. He says, I feel outraged. A Slate staffer told me about Pesca's participation in the conversation. I can't believe I had to watch him enthusiastically provoke people on whether or not it's appropriate to use a, a racist slur. Uh, another state slavered uh, anger. Where, where is the small, well, Jesus Christ. I got, I, I got the wrong quote here. Uh, just, uh, uh, but that was the white on race wars, by the way. They have they run a tight ship over there. They run a tighter ship than this. <laughs> one second, one second, one yeah, second. Please come more prepared to the show next time. Please no come to rehearsal. All right, well whatever. Anyway, he said that it was a small ask to not have to to just to have oh here he says extremely he says Okay, this is it. John Anderson, a black staff member at Slade who hosted the third season of the podcast, Slow Burn Disagree. He says, for black employees, it's an extremely small ask to not hear that particular slur and not have to debate about whether it's okay for white employees to use that particular slur. And, this, and, and everybody was all like, well, yeah, it is a small ask. And I'm like, wait, to not have to uh, hear somebody use, call you that or whatever, that is, a, that is obviously a small ask. Nobody, nobody should have to hear the word but if you're a journalist i think it's a very big ask to not have to hear other journalists debate what was one of the top stories in the country about a, a reporter at the new york times who got fired for for using the word and by the way the new york times quotes the words in its article uh, slate right. quotes the word in its article town of hesse coats Tana Hesse Coates believes it's okay for white people to quote the word. John McWhorter in the Atlantic wrote that. It, so it's it's a it is a debate which people of all colors are on all sides. You're a journalist, and I'm like, yeah, I think it's a very. I don't think it, I think it's a it's a huge ask to think that because you have an opinion about it, the entire newsroom has to shut down and not discuss it. Nobody's saying the word. They're just talking about right. what happened. Silly, it's silly shit. It's treating everybody like we're in kindergarten. It's like not, we're adults. We can hear the word and know that you're just talking about the word, but not using the word. It's like yeah. everything's not that simple, like, but that's how we caught up in. It's more liberal shit like that, liberal left shit, that get them fired. Gerard, it's a shame that he I, lost I, his job for that. I'm happy to hear you say that, Sean, because, you know, my whole life, yours too, where you're, I'm only a little bit older than you. Well, you know, people, people, people of very bona fide, you know, left-wing credentials would use the word. Randy Newman, you know the Randy Newman, the guy who does the Disney songs? Oh, yeah. He had a famous song where he was, was making fun of Lester Maddox in Louisiana. He says, keep in the N-words, but he said it out, down, you know, and he was singing in character. Yeah, he, and he was, was, he was lauded for this. Him. Right, but, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, like, we got to go on. We're so Again, simple minded minded now, and act like we don't know the difference. Yeah. I, I don't use the word. I don't, I don't even quote the word anymore. I mean, I, yeah. Ever since you get the law, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a quick advice <laughs> for you, I just real quick before we get into Michael Che. I wrote a book, and in the book is a, is, is a character who is black and a comedian and uses that word. Right. And in the book I write, I use N asterisk, asterisk, asterisk instead of the actual N word. You're definitely right. going to get canceled. You're a six-letter word, but go ahead. Well, whatever I use, I use N in a series of asterisks. Yeah, right. 
Is even that going to get me into trouble? No. White girls. But you got people nowadays going back into Tom Sawyer and taking out nigger Joe. And Sherrod, you know, you, know what, you know something about me that almost nobody knows, and I'm going to virtue signal for a second here because you happen to know about it. Do you remember when I got invited to do a show on, on Kumia's network that time? And I went and watched the show, and they were doing some humor that, that, I, that, I, that, that disturbed me, and I didn't want to go do that. You remember that? Yeah, and you, I remember. You told me to go ahead and do it. I remember, not Kumia's show, it was Bill Schultz's show, and Bill Schultz is Bill's not show. doing yeah, that Bill's kind of show. Right. But... Because Bill's so show I, is different than what the network yeah. seems to tend to be. I, I'm just trying to make the point that a lot of comedians were doing that show, all those shows in his network. And I'm saying, like, I, I think it... I'm, I don't have like tolerance for that kind of stuff. I just Neither think do. I just think it's night and day when people in good faith are discussing. Stuff. It's like saying I don't want to see a swastika ever again. I don't care. I don't care why. I don't care if it's a if it's a documentary about Nazi Germany. It's painful. I don't want to see a swastika ever again. Well, no. I mean, you know, and and even survivors of the camps yeah. wouldn't wouldn't be given that courtesy. And I'm sure it goes through them like a knife to see it, but they would have to understand, well, yes, but. But a lot of them would want it to be seen so it never happened again. It's like, if we bury yeah. all these things, what's stopping it from popping back up? I because disagree. People, I think the more like you it never it happened or it was never there. Yeah. I, think anyway. the more, I never believed in this. If people see it, then it won't happen again. I think if anything, people see it, they get an idea like, hmm, that's interesting. That can happen too. Yeah, we can do they that. make it too sexy. You know, I, I, to be you know, very clear. They got away with it. Maybe we can pull it off. <laughs> to be, Here's to be what very, they did wrong. <laughs> I, I want to be very clear so I don't get in trouble. I, I recognize, I can see that the rules have changed. Yeah. I, do not, I do not quote it anymore because to do so would be, I think, defiant. And, and I'm, I'm not looking to be defiant on this. I'm, I, will, I will obey the, rule, the rules of polite company. Right. And I know what they are now. They're not what they were 10 years ago, but they are what they are now. So I, I am not saying that I want to go. I, I, not, I don't miss my opportunity to quote the word. It, it's, not, it's not that at all. It's you can just, still stand in a house by yourself, no? I mean, I don't think between me and you. But it's very painful to see good people, people yeah. with families, people with jobs, losing everything with a stigma attached to it to boot. Slime, a slime that, yeah. it's not like they just lost a job and go work somewhere else. Because they were simply trying to discuss something because they were on the right on the right side of of the issue you know they just they just said something and they repeated it back and now finished and now it's even worse now a guy who just says i didn't think that was right that that happened to that guy now he's finished this is well, not you gotta america understand, this is white shit this is white on white crime this ain't got nothing to do with black people yeah. ain't no black person get this person fired this is white guilt and white people who's being like this. I'm not like him, so I'm going to fire him. So now y'all know I'm like, like that. Sherrod, get this guy, Joel Anderson, who said this uh, on, your, on your Race Wars podcast. Oh, yeah, I bring him on, definitely. If you He's right up our him. alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll send you the name. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be on it, but I, if I can't be on it, I just sit there and watch, too. I, I'd be very interested to yeah, hear Yeah, I have it. you on with it. Joel Anderson, huh? And it's he's exactly the one who got initially fired, or he's the one who got secondary fired? No, he Joel and no Joel Anderson is the guy who said that it's a small ask. He's he's the he's the African American oh. gentleman who said it's a small ask. Um, but uh, I don't want to be on it actually because I don't want to. It, it's unbecoming for me to debate him. I can debate you because we we know each other all this time, but it it, it wouldn't look right. But uh, um, I am I I am interested in hearing you talk to him. Yeah, I want to talk to him. Sounds well, yeah. Sounds like a good talk. I mean, okay. that's what we solve things, huh? Michael Che, Michael Che, go ahead, Dan. Good lead, and I'll just give okay, a brief introduction. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, and everybody knows, but in case you don't, Michael Che, SNL uh, news anchor of Weekend Update on SNL, also head writer at SNL, also a black man, made the following joke. Uh, Israel, on Weekend Update, Israel has announced that they have vaccinated 50% of their population. I'm guessing, or, I'm sorry, Israel has announced they have vaccinated half of their population, I'm guessing it was the Jewish half. The <laughs> implication being that Israel is prioritizing Jews over non-Jews, creating a scandal. People say this is, uh, this is anti-Semitism. It, uh, it is factually incorrect because Israel indeed has vaccinated all citizens regardless of uh, religion or uh, ethnic group or whatever. <laughs> it is in fact Palestinian Arabs from the territories that aren't getting vaccinated, but 
there they made an agreement with Israel that they would be in charge of their own health system. So, uh, Mike, it, people have gone as far as calling for Michael Jay's, uh, Mike, Michael Chase rather uh, firing, or at least that he should apologize. Others have just said that SNL should apologize, and that the various people had various opinions. But anyway, most comics are defending Michael Che, including myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although I don't think that. First of all, it's a joke about. It, it's really a joke about any underserved community in any country. So it could have been about African Americans in America. It's not really anti-Semitic. It could have been about any underserved community during the pandemic in any country. That's first of all. That's the joke. Right. That's a joke. He's saying That's like Israel, America got fifty percent of. The, I bet it, I know probably the white half. Yes, That's, that would have been an equivalent joke. The only yes. counterpoint I would make to that is: is there are so many people out there willing to? It's and we go through. We we we. Uh, this point comes up oftentimes. Is like um, you might say something completely that's without meaning to be racist, but it might encourage racists to be racist. So yeah. the argument being is that it might this might encourage people that already feel a certain way about Israel or and or Jews to to misinterpret or to 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 run with it, if you will, and say that, if, if that, all those if all those clips of the Hasids without masks on <laughs> cutting each other in the middle of COVID didn't encourage you to be anti-Semitic, this might put them over the top, Sharad. What do you think? I mean, can it be? Can you say <laughs> the same about how they used to say about music? How music caused this young teenager to kill somebody, or the music did this? It's like what is going to influence what? So, so, so let me say, I, I think I'm, I'm considered credible with our audience on issues, uh, Jews. I'm, I'm like a poster child for Ilhan Omar's uh, dual loyalty uh, Jew, right? So, I mean, I, my, heart, my heart is very much uh, um, uh, sympathetic to Israel. Yes. So, so let me say, Michael Che, who I know very well, is not even slightly, not oh. possible, not one ounce oh. of blood anti-Semitic. No, that may be, but you, how well do you really know Michael Che? He comes by. I mean, I agree that he's not, but I don't think you know. I know well. I know. No, I, 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 I don't. I think I mean, Noam is more anti-Semitic than Michael Che. <laughs> let me say, let me say how well I know him. To, to not, I don't want to try to pretend like we're buddies. I've spent, I think, two different times had long conversations in the olive tree about the world and issues and whatever it is, where we all said stuff which um, we wouldn't want, you know. Re, 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 repeated very very i shouldn't put it that way we all said stuff very very honest to each other you know right. and i and i feel like i know very well where he's coming from on um issues of the world i think i think i i know that very well and i also know his spirit and yeah. cl cl clearly he's not anti-semitic there not um what's that not at all oh, no. not at all anti-semitic so now there is a there is a reality you zoom out and there's, there's a reality which lends itself to a simplistic joke, which is that it's true. The, 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 the Israel is getting the, is getting vaccinated and the, and the, and the Arabs in the occupied territories are not. And people don't know all the details. Well, actually Israel has a lot of Arabs as well. And obviously, and I looked, I did a lot of research on today and Dan is right in the Oslo. Stop report. ruining a joke with facts. No, no. Oh, wait, what I'm going to say, what I'm, that's what I'm saying is that, you can't expect people to to go through all this thing and, and know everything about the, the the what's going on there. The 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 broad contours of the joke are correct, which is that the Jews are getting and that's you know it's it is painful. I, I can't lie, it is painful as a Jew, as an Israeli, to hear the joke because I know that people take that almost as the news that in that way you know they, they don't really like i said they don't hear much more they hear a and joke plus, they see a headline and plus as a jew and an israeli you remember a time what it would have been like that so it's well, still a funny I'm, thing i'm just saying you know people are so uninformed and 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 so and I, I hate i hate to i hate to see that misinformation pass into the general public even a little I bit I, but if, I, you I, got, if you get your news from weekend update you're an idiot already you're stupid as fuck if that's when you get your new, like, it's time to learn what happened this week, you're dumb. Well, that that, that, that made, idea of, of policing jokes and saying he's anti-Semitic, you know, they, they, they go too far. They you, you criticize SNL, you know, if you want, for a, a joke which, so. um, which, which was based on, based on incorrect facts, let's say. You don't have to call it anti-Semitic. 
right. since, when, since when are we criticizing jokes based on facts or incorrect facts or whatever? It's like it was fucking funny. Like it, it was a joke and it was funny and you know, people got offended because it touched a nerve. Right. And maybe they nerve. should be yeah, maybe they should be looking at that instead in give instead of giving Michael Chase shit for making a fucking joke. Well, why did you, I didn't find it, I can't, I can't, I can't lie. I'm not the audience for that joke. I didn't find it funny. I mean, okay, I, well, I, I, I'm as rare, I'm, 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 I'm as rare. I know, I, I can't, I'm not, I, don't, I hope you understand what I mean by saying that. I, I can't like help video. myself. I know, I know, it's, I know it's constructed as a funny joke. It's just that I'm the target of it in a sense. And it, I'm like, oh, you know, like, like it hurt a little bit. It's like, you told a really funny joke about how ugly I am. I, yeah, I get it, but you know, <laughs> I'm the one you're calling ugly, so. You know, I, I can't, I can't pretend. Well, you can do I, that same joke in any country about Serbs or fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, <laughs> I mean, any I, Serb community, I like get that a, in and fit a country in, and that's the joke. And yes, abs abs Jews. absolutely right. They're going to do with Jews. Absolutely. That's true, except that it was about Jews. And as, I mean, I'm also the target of it. And I did think it was funny. Yeah, you I don't mean, love Israel. You don't love Israel. Yeah. Oh, here we go. In fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, know, you said you were Jewish and Israeli. I, 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 you kind of lost me there. I, you were neither born in Israel, nor do you hold Israeli citizenship. You speak two words of Hebrew, and you don't like falafel. Call them out. First of all, falafel is cultural appropriation. It's Arabic food. But but uh, uh, second of all, both my parents are Israeli. Yeah, I, I, I spent I spent I, I spent a lot of time in Israel, and I and the only reason I don't have an Israeli citizenship is because I don't want it because it's a hassle going in and out of the country. But they tried more than once when I traveled there. I guess, I guess it depends on your definition. My parents are both Canadian, and I see the maple leaf does nothing for me. <laughs> I am but I, I grew up steeped in. in I, I no one would be considered Israeli by Israeli. I mean, any Jew could be Israeli tomorrow. Just no, 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 no. I, I grew up. I, my father ran an Israeli nightclub. I, I, I well, my, 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 my grandparents all retired to Israel for Christ's sake. I mean, the fact that you ran an Israeli nightclub is less relevant than the fact that well, playing Israeli are, music. I'm saying everything. Art, the olive tree serves Israeli food. That's, all, my, all, all my grandparents live in Israel. Or yeah, did, that's, or did. that's why you're Israeli. But that, let's not get too sidetracked. The, fa no. the fact is, is you just made my point, though, which is that you didn't think it was funny. You're the target. I'm also the target. And I thought it was hilarious. That having been said, it stings a little bit because we know that there's some fucking truth to it. But you can't get <laughs> mad at Michael Che for that. Well, well, okay. So I th I understand. I think the joke is I think the joke is funny, but yeah, it, it stung. I don't know. Well, why why would people get more mad at Michael Che and not at Lauren Michaels? Like he's asleep behind the wheel. He hears all these jokes. He's Jewish. Why don't you get mad at the fact that he's getting <laughs> vaccinated? That's who you should be mad at. Mad at what? Why aren't why get mad at Lauren Michael or Michael Che? Why aren't we mad at the fact that these people aren't getting vaccinated? Well, Terriel, that's that's where you're gonna have to. Be I mean, we, I don't want to get into it. Number one, there's not enough vaccine to go around, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The so, so, the Jews no, so, definitely need to get it first. No, no. What I'm saying is that, so, so it's not as if it's not as if it's not as if it were possible. What I'm saying. Look, it's not, it's not enough, everybody. If your name starts with Greenberg. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's let's be, let's get this right now. What I'm saying is that when there's not enough parachutes to go around, you have you have a different you have a difficult ethical problem. Everybody who is a citizen of Israel, Arab or Israeli, is getting the vaccine. No, I was being. I was. Being so being Gaza. This is some of this is important to think about. Gaza. Right. Uh, Israel withdrew from Gaza. It is not occupied territory anymore. Although people will say that it's a, surrounded. There's, there's a blockade, but the blockade also <laughs> comes from from Egypt. But also there's a blockade because there's weapons and everything coming out. Now th yeah. the West Bank. The West Bank is clearly. Um, occupied territory, but I actually have it here. It says uh, here, this is from the Oslo Accords, powers and responsibilities in the sphere of health in the West Bank and Gaza Strip will be transferred. This is the exact quote from the agreement they both signed, will be transferred to the Palestinian side, including the health insurance system. The Palestinian side shall continue to apply the present standards of vaccination of Palestinians and shall improve them according Accordingly to international accepted standards in the field. So that's the agreement. Who signed it? Jared Kushner? <laughs> so that's, Yasser Arafat signed that. 
Now there is there is also an article the- about there's also an article about the um, Geneva Convention which people think could supersede the Oslo Accords. But in the Geneva Convention it says there can be no question of making the occupying power alone responsible for the whole burden of organizing hospitals and taking measures to control epidemics. The task above uh, all one for competent service of up. Um, but it's possible, it's possible that national authorities will perfectly well be able to look after the health of a population. In such case, the occupying power will not have to intervene. But how can the national power be able to do that when they can't even fly things in and out of the country? No, no, that's in, in, in the West Bank, they can fly things out. The fact is that they are now getting the vaccine. They are, the, if you read about it, the, 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 PL, the Palestinian Authority is buying the vaccine elsewhere, number one. Number two, by you know, in, in in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of doses. Number recently, two, recently. number two, the Arab world. Let's not pretend otherwise. Is sparsely populated and filthy rich, and filthy rich. And there's no. I mean, there there are Arab emirates who could buy every uh, Palestinian in the, in the West Bank of a, a vaccine, and they, they wouldn't even miss it. And they don't. Yeah. So it's not, it's not simply a matter of being occupied. So if you mix all that in, and I think what I just read from the Oslo Accords to any fair-minded person ought, ha, would have to say, well, I, better, I better stop and look into this because that seems pretty explicit and that was negotiated, right? So it's complex. I would be very happy to see Israel, especially now that they're getting ahead of the vaccine and most of the country's getting vaccinated. I hope they, they really prioritize humanitarianism and get that vaccine into the occupied territories. Well, both you because, know as well as because, I Hold on, both because it's the right thing to do, and it's also, it's good for them. It's good for Israel, too, too to do it. However, I also shudder to think that if Yeshua were on the other foot, what, if any of the Jews would be getting the vaccine. <laughs> but you know as well as I do that some of those rich Arabs are busy right now killing journalists. They yes. can't be. <laughs> Do you think that Lauren Michaels sat down and read the Oslo Accord to Michael Che before he said he could take that joke? No, but, but, oh, but, 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 um, you know, this is where it, this is where it gets, it gets dicey because no, of course he didn't, nor should he have to. But there are other jokes told from time to time where people say, you know, how could you say that about other groups? How could you say that? You know, uh, why? You know, it's not true. It's you know. So, I guess a lot depends on whose ox is gored. Let's be honest. Um, my, so what did I mean? We, we I think it's pretty clear that Lauren Michaels was aware. Let me put it another way: there are a lot of people who who think that. Who, I'm sorry. There are a lot of people who are defending Michael Che, and I'm one of them. But there are a lot of people who, if this were a gay joke. Uh, would not be so forgiving. How are you gonna do the gay? Just make it a gay joke, and let me let me hear it. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to come up with a gay equivalent gay joke and a trans joke. But, but, but you or trans joke. I mean, but, but, wait, Di- Diana's here. Okay, but let me just finish this. Uh, Go ahead, Dan. Finish. Um, Lauren Michaels, I think it's pretty clear, was aware of the joke before it aired. I mean, he's he's pretty hands on, and there's a dress rehearsal. I assume he watched. Uh, w- w- don't you think that Lord Michaels clearly could have predicted the backlash? And uh, if so, why did he let the joke go on the air? Was it a publicity? I, I would have let it go on the air too. I, I don't think he thought it was a big deal. It's no, I, I would have let it go on the air just like I would let it go on the Comedy Cellar because but wouldn't you th- wouldn't you have predicted a backlash or no? Would you not have predicted the backlash? Maybe I would have, but I would I wouldn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't buckle to that if they wanted yeah. to do the joke. I, I would I would let it go on the air. Yeah. And see, I think what I'm, I'm trying to really make a, 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 a subtle point here, which is that it, you don't have to like the joke to defend it. You know? but, and Lauren is a producer and is a businessman. Is it good for business to let a joke like that go on the air? I it think there's a lot of tension on SNL right now. Right, it could be. A public, he he might have thought, because he's a crafty guy, as Jews can be, that, <laughs> <laughs> that ooh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do a Lauren impression because I won't do it well, but he might have thought, wow, this could give us some publicity. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I, I, I offered to, 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 to publicly defend Michael Che, and I would defend him in a drop of a hat. I love him, and I'll defend him too. Yeah, that guy is, that, I love that guy, and, you know, yeah, it, it, if, 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 if he were and I were alone, I would argue with him about what's going on in the West Bank. We, we probably wouldn't agree. So what? If him and I were alone, I would smooch him. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Diana. Hi, Noam. How are you? There we go. Diana, good to see you. Hey, can you hear me? I hear yeah, you. Do you remember, you remember Sherrod? 
Yes. Of course. Yes. I had a great time on this show. Yes, that's right. You were great on there. I, I want to have you back soon, definitely. Yes. Thank you. I, I do a formal introduction. Oh, Introduce my, Diana, yeah. I mean, you know her. I, I don't, but I can do the introduction because that's sort of my thing, and I don't get a lot to say, so I really cherish the introductions. <laughs> well, let me see if I can find it. Um, sorry, because Periel sent it to me under a separate email. Diana Taylor. Hey. Yes, she is a... Uh, yeah, this, 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 this introduction doesn't say a whole lot, Perry. It says, Diana Taylor was widely accepted by such famed bars, clubs, and social scenes as the famous Cafe Wah, where she became Queen of the Wah. Yes, Queen first of the Wah. First record deal was with Priority Records label, and she set a precedent by being the first trans woman and underground house artist signed to the rap genre label. Numerous television appearances include The Maury Show, VH1 Rock of Ages, and this goes back a year or two, Jenny Jones. Welcome. Diana Taylor. What about her yeah. book? She has a book out. No, it wasn't in yeah. the introduction, so blame period. What's the book? I'm not aging watch with you. It's oh, funny. sweet. Look at that cover. Oh, that's money. Let's, let's <laughs> let the record show that there's a beautiful picture of Diana. So uh, looking happy like to be here, dollars. you guys. That is great. Diana used to shut it down. For those who don't know, at the while, she shut it down. The best singer used to do the backflip on the stage. <laughs> Were you singing with Connor yes. Tribble? Were you there in the Connor Tribble era? Yes. Reverend, Reverend. The Reverend yes. Connor, the good yes. Reverend. <laughs> yes, a showstopper. Yes. What, what songs did you sing? I mean, I used to go to the Y to listen, so I'm trying to jog my memory. What songs were, were, did you sing regularly? Right? I, was, I, was, I, I had somehow uh, became very well known for singing the dance version, house version of I Believe I Can Fly. Yeah. And um, Proud Mary. Yes. Well, I remember. I would do a backflip on Proud Mary. Yes. That's what it was. Why used to be fire. It just fire. Oh, yeah. When oh, we got to talk. Well, you're, you're not. Very, very. No, I'm not. There we go. Diana, yes. Diana, you got to say it again. Your, your, your connection's bad. I'm getting. I'm getting. Oh, no. There we go. We hear you now. What about. Oh, it's going in. Okay, out. or I can't okay. believe this. That's okay, sweetie. So, so Diana. Oh. What about Diana, now? Can you hear me? Yes. So far, so good. No, we, we haven't. I mean, I, I saw you a couple of years. Yeah, like, I hear you like, great. I hear you guys fine. <laughs> I saw you a couple of years ago in the in the olive tree, but um this isn't a this is an incredible time uh to in the world for for trans people, no? What, what, yes, what, what's, yes. your, what's your what's your feelings about this? Did you ever think you'd live to see what you're seeing now in terms of the acceptance and, and the change in attitudes in, in the world? I, I actually did think I would live to see it. And um, you have a lot to do with that, um, with me coming to that, um, that belief. Because when I first, you know, came to New York in 1997, my grandmother had passed away. She was the only real mother that I knew. And I had no, nobody. All I had was the church. And so I go to New York and I go to open mic at Cafe Wa one night. And I killed it, I guess. And then um, all of a sudden, you invited me to come back another night. Um, and I came back. And then next thing you know, I had my own event every Thursday night for a couple of years. I, that just kind of happened. You allowed it to happen, actually. Um, so I actually I didn't you know gave you were me a lot I didn't, of that. I didn't know you were trans. He was trying to get it in. <laughs> <laughs> were you oh, I think it's, I, I, I think after a moment there, he kind of picked up on it. No, I but, knew. But um, <laughs> the, the rules and the words was, you know, people were talking. But what I want to say is I want to set the record straight. Noam and I have never had any kind of interest. He's never shown me anything. I've never <laughs> even suspected or thought so. No, he's not a training chaser. Um, but he is a very, very good-hearted, very generous soul. Because he is. Thank you. Was, he I was moments. actually batshit crazy back then. He has Noam, his moments, don't he, Diana? I was back. Noam is some. Oh, about trust me. Yeah. <laughs> you I, I was batshit you crazy love. back then. Yeah, you can love him at one yeah. point, and the next point, you know, you chasing him down the street. <laughs> oh, so yeah, so there was there was a time. I was building up to that. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Gerard, stop. 
Okay. I know, I know you want to get me, but you got to talk about the, you got to talk about the four guys that that whoop their ass too. Oh, that's we'll right. We'll talk about that later. That's right. So what she's referring but here to? We go. So if we, Nora, if we can all be, we'll all be quiet for a second, Diana. Let Diana tell her story. Go ahead, Diana. Okay. So Norm gave me a shot when nobody else would give me a shot. I didn't want to do the the whole drag scene thing. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to sing live, and he allowed me to do that but what i was about to say is back then i was batshit crazy still trying to find myself my house had burned down and i told norm that my house had burned down and he was so generous and he he helped me get back on my feet i'll say that um and even when people would say to norm why you got this whatever whatever you know working at your bar or on the stage all the time why are you you know allowing this and so forth he still would allow me to you know on my life but all the static is now sexual. <laughs> he let you what? <laughs> he let me slap, slap. slap. I you got cut off. Yeah, well, the connection. I don't know what to do. We can't hear. I'm it. still here. You there? We hear you now. It's kind of in and out. Are you this is terrible. Me? Do you that's want to okay. try to reconnect, Diana? No, no, it's it's okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you want to you want to go out and reconnect? Uh, she must be calling so, from the West Bank. <laughs> she's in Gaza. <laughs> I love that somebody's trying to give Noam a compliment. It just can't go through. That's right. Even the, the whole system <laughs> broke down. <laughs> it just like blew up Zoom. <laughs> She's blocked on the every computer. Network. Just couldn't take it. <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. Let me tell you what she was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so, Noam, was she? Was she when you met her? Was she the Diana Taylor you see now, or was she uh, under another name and another? Uh, yeah, yeah, she was, she was, she was exactly like she is now, and she's right in her book. She she doesn't age, and um, she was uh, um, she she's a tremendous performer, you know. No but but she but she's not right. Nobody ever gave me nobody ever gave me me a I hard time. Ask you about that. Yeah. It just seemed like in the village, it just seemed when she had said that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. In the village, somebody would actually have an issue with. Manny trans- thought they were dating. It did go that went to a period yeah. of that. <laughs> There was there there was a thing, and I, and I I would wait for her to connect. I hope she's she's coming back. The, there was there was bigotry um, from the musicians. There was bigotry from the other musicians toward her. Yeah, and I don't Except even know the black ones who go to church. It, it was that, yeah, and oh, and um, on keyboard with a judge. <laughs> and I can I can remember is she back. No, that's that, book. I just that's Diana's book, yeah. and I. And I can remember having a big argument. I might have told this story before. I can remember a big argument where I where we were rehearsing her songs when she wasn't there, and I would refer to her as she. And by the way, this was, uh, you know, before you anybody cared about that, right? I would just refer to her as she. Oh, here she is, Diana. You back? No. And <laughs> musicians would cor- correct me. He, he. And I mean, come on, what are you, what, what are you doing? You know, like, what, why are you, but, and, and. Um, it was black musicians, though. I hate to say it, but I'm sure. No, in, in fairness to the them. Reverend Don, did the Connor ever say that? No, no. Thank you. But in Brian fairness. Brian Stevens ever say it? No, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but in fairness to them, it was, and, and but this is a black lesson. Church. <laughs> but Sherrod, this is a lesson all around. In fair, and when you, you can't process how things could have happened in the past. In fairness to them, they don't they don't feel that way anymore. No, they I'm don't. Sure, I'm sure they've grown. I'm sure they they're, think, yep, they say, "Jesus, what, what was I thinking back then?" Yep, embarrassed by that behavior. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was but, insecurities in themselves. I get it. But they no, but they were they were products of their time, even a short sure. time ago. You know, yeah. whatever it was, it was the '90s and the 2000s, and the, the aughts, as they say. Um, and I I think about that. With, with some regularity when I, when people, you know, find it hard to understand how somebody 50 years ago could have said whatever it was that they said. 
right. And I, and I will actually throw it in a musician's face. I'll be like, oh, really? Well, do you remember when in, in, in 2000 you were correcting me about he? Yeah. You know, you know how it sounds now? Yeah. But what, I mean, what was, they were saying he, were they saying it just like with, 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 with viciousness and hate? Oh, here she is. Diana. Or were they saying it just like? Uh, uh, Di Diana, can you hear me? She's connecting to the oh, audio. DT Media Reports field reporter is connecting. So I'm here. Okay, so yeah. I was telling them about the bigotry that I saw towards trans people back, when did you work, like early 2000s, right? Yeah, 98. 98, and through that time. So I was saying that I never, no customer ever, ever, ever com, uh, said anything negative to me about having a trans performer. And to be honest, I didn't know the difference then trans, transvestite, I, you know, drag shows, were a staple in the village for a very long time. And people would, you know, it, it was, and there was Lucky Chang's was that Chinese restaurant. Yeah. That had, so it was kind of considered like kind of cool to see drag shows or I don't know if that, if that terminology is still okay. But I told them, that, but the other musicians could be quite harsh. Do you remember that? The other musicians? Well, there was one in particular that I did not like too well. And uh, he played the bass and I'm gonna leave that <laughs> alone. Um, but he actually did evolve a little right. bit. He did evolve. And his son was always respectful. Um, but I've never had a problem with the band. Jose was always the best. He would always say, DT. Uh, yeah, Jason was. Uh, was was an angel. Yeah. Um, everyone, every single band member was all right with me. There we go. Good. So, I was telling well. that, so in rehearsal, I would refer to you as she. And from time yeah. to time, somebody would say he. I mean, like, what are you doing? You know, whatever it is. And I and I was telling Shira, but they all they all horrified to think of what that they did that then. But they didn't. In a certain way, they were pro, They were they were bigoted in a way, but they didn't know any better. I I, no, I know that sounds funny. Yeah, go ahead. The squeaky wheel wants degrees. Yeah, yeah. wants that oil, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that part. You it was their right. struggle, not mine. Yeah. But I always learned from like Muhammad Ali when he changed his name to Muhammad Ali and said, I'm a grown uh -huh. person. I can choose to be called what I want to be called. And I took yeah. the same as he and she. If somebody wants to be called you she, I'm calling you she. Because that's your, that's you. You get to choose who you are to the world. And I accept it. I don't give a fuck. That's how I live. I, it was life or death for me. Either live and be me or die. Yeah. So, so Diana, and, and, and so the thing with me is that, and I've gotten some flack for it. So there's one issue on, on um, and you know me, like if there's anybody who didn't give a shit about anybody being trans, it was me, right? So then right. the issue, comes, the issue comes up like, should, tra should trans women uh, compete against, uh, should trans men compete, how, I can't, shut I'll up. Compete against, uh, in, in sports, should, well, should yeah. trans women compete against, uh, uh, cis, what's we just had that race recently with, uh, the, the trans women came in first and yeah. second in a race, relay yeah. race. Uh, and, and I, and, and to be honest, I, I, I have, uh, I, I think that I don't, I think, I, I think that that's unfair in a certain way. So people are horrified that I'm some, some kind of bigot, you know? Well, I, 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 well, I do agree that it, it, it is pretty much unfair because we are, you know, physically whole other beings. Like we're whole other, you know, yeah. physically we're built different. That's it, okay? So you're not, this, you, I don't care what you do with your body, you're never ever a, the other gender. Right. Period. So no matter what I can do to my body it would never make me a bona fide born female. Or so, male. I, so I tell so, them the story. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So go real ahead. quick. To yeah. answer that is um, I don't think it's fair personally because I feel like, you know, um, start your own damn sports. You know yeah, what I'm I would saying? watch it. That'd be awesome. But there, start your own like, shit. But Diane and in the height. Not only that. I'm sorry, you're looking like Max Hedrum right now. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> oh, in, in a high school context, um, I, I, the other side of the issue, and I understand that there might be some biological advantages. I think, I think there are, I guess, and the research, I think, shows it. Um, but in a high school contest, context, it may not be so easy for the one trans girl at the school to have her own team. She can't right. be on her own team. Right. She's the only trans girl in the school. So she, you're, you, what you're doing is you're... You're you're putting that one trans girl in a in a very difficult position, and she's going to suffer. So you have to balance that again. No, she put herself in that position. Um, listen to me. We have choices in life. We can't have everything we want. Okay, 
I can't have everything I fucking want. I want reparations. You, you're breaking your neck to give them to me? No. So listen to me. Well, I voted females, <laughs> listen, females go to the female restroom. Trans women want to go to the female restroom. I don't have a problem with the restroom thing, but I do believe that wanting to, you, you can't have your cake and eat everybody else's too. That's number one. We're not there yet. And if you are a female group, if, first of all, women want, um, equal, everybody want equal rights, okay? Feminist, the feminist movement, they want to be equal and, you know, do things like men. I get that. But this is a physical difference here. Because I didn't want to, I, I actually didn't want to get into that issue. I, I was, oh, was, was, was going to use it to launch into the thing, but I, but I will say in high school, I mean, you, you I think um, in, in high school, I, my heart tells me we should try to let everybody compete. It's when it gets into professional sports and things like that, that I think it really, or even college sports, whatever. I mean, I, I, I can go both ways. I, would you want a man, is, would you want a guy, yeah, what about would wrestling? you want a guy oh, wait, wrestling the thing. your daughter? Wait, yeah, hold wrestling on. Your daughter? No. Would you want a guy wrestling your daughter? Well, let me tell you, Diana, one time a trans woman tried to kick the shit out of me. <laughs> And I learned the lesson. Good job. <laughs> that happened twice. <laughs> so no. Diana, one time we had a fight. This is what. So one time yeah. Diana had a fight. Them. It was a fight because she hadn't gotten paid. But God forbid, I, I would never. I wasn't, like, <laughs> wasn't, I wasn't withholding her pay or anything. Anything like. I know everybody's seen the George Club owner holding her. But for some reason, she hadn't gotten her pay, and she wanted it right then there. And I'm like, Diana, leave me alone. Ask the manager. I can't. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm busy. I'm. Try, I'm trying to. Give get a boss. Here. He know he could help her. <laughs> I, and and she started chasing and swinging, <laughs> and and you know and I ran the corner, ran around the corner. corner. <laughs> and the thing is, she connected with me one time, and that, that was a man. A man hit me right, right, <laughs> hit me hard, and I'm running. But the thing is, I can't hit back because it's a woman. So it's this weird <laughs> dichotomy where I'm getting hit by a man. <laughs> but I can't hit back because it's a woman. I remember it's like yes, it is, and I, and I know it, it's, it's, there's a total cognitive dissonance going on. So I said I got to get the fuck out of here, and I run to the garage, the parking garage, and they're looking at me, and I run into the office where they keep the money, and they're like, "Get the fuck out of there!" And I run into the office, and I and I and I grab the door, and I close the door of the office, and I'm holding the door shut, and she's banging on the glass. <laughs> yes, motherfucker, you're gonna, you're gonna. And the and all the garage attendants are cracking up because they oh think God. they think it's some girl that I'm banging is like caught me cheating or something. They don't know. And and I'm going, help, help! I'm screaming, help! <laughs> I found out later what this was black watching. dude is gonna he's gonna kick the shit out of me. <laughs> But I, and, and truthfully, I really wasn't gonna hurt you. Um, we had some kind of just, we just knew that we had a a connection. We, I just knew Norm loved me. Yeah, yes, I agree. You know? I and agree. the garage, I and the garage attendants were sure it was a woman. And then they told Juanita, and the next day, Juanita came, they're like, your husband had this fight with this girl. <laughs> and he hit her, she hit him. And she, so Juanita's like, He's fucking around. This this <laughs> cocksucker's got a girlfriend. So she starts, she starts talking with me. Who the fuck are you having a fight with? I, I was like, no, sweetheart, that's Diana. Who's Diana? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. When she found out who I was, she fell out. Uh, <laughs> so she said you should have kicked his ass. <laughs> yes. But here's what happened. And actually. did I fire you even after that? No. No. That's what no, I want. You deserved to tell you. it, you son of a bitch. Have our money. I ready. should have. I should have been eighty-six. He never eighty-six. Man, I have. I have done a lot of stupid shit back then. Well, speak I for yourself. Find myself. <laughs> yeah, he forgave me, and he he kept me there. Period. And he looked out for me when I needed him the most. So I learned so much from you, Noam. Um, you are you are an educator. Um, you have taught me a lot about music. I learned something else from you too. At that time, I didn't realize that I was comic relief. My mother watched one of my shows, the taping of my show. She said, everyone loves a clown. They never bring you home from the circus. <laughs> and, but I wanna thank you for allowing me to have that platform to be that clown, to grow and learn. And so I am, I am doing very well as a musician right now. And I wanna thank you. I am a writer with Rock Nation. 
Um, Crazy. And I'm, I'm just very happy. And you, and Diana, it's a comic relief right. thing. Actually, it's right. interesting you say that. I don't know if the listeners. I can remember it telling you, just sing the song. Because yes. I, I used to think that you, you under rated your own ability just to be accepted just as a singer rather than as a trans you right. know novel novelty performer because you were very musical you would sing right. beautifully so thank you, know. you. yeah but you told me one time norm you said why do you yell and scream so much remember that ah, 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 I used yeah, to do? Yeah. that was the pain that was like trying to let all that like 12 years of slavery out get it out yep i, get I it. had to get that out i had to get the oppression from my neighborhood oppression from the church oppression from every damn body everything and that oppression was oppression from was known being late with your money <laughs> it, don't fuck with my money well see here's the thing about the money situation real quick hi periel hi diana you're so beautiful well, so are you i fell in love with you over the phone i know i fell in love with you too you're amazing. all right i'm gonna buy you a ring next week I swear to God. <laughs> okay. I'm it's legal now. Texas. my husband will be thrilled to get rid of me yeah oh, oh i'm gonna leave that one alone honey yes so noam um what happened was my house had burnt down and i was going through a lot and um, I don't think you knew at that time. And so that, that hamburger, that cheeseburger and fries just wasn't fucking getting. Remember I used to sing and perform and get cheeseburger and fries every night? <laughs> until you took notice and were like, why is she eating fries and cheeseburgers every night? She don't sing. And it turned out because my house had burned down. I was going through a lot. I was having a nervous breakdown. I didn't even know I was having a nervous breakdown. And the weight of life was just, just, just wearing me out. And I lost a lot of weight when I didn't have any at all. And so it took a toll on my mind, but I just refused to go back home to Texas, a failure. Um, so that's what happened. I was fighting the world and fighting myself and I was hungry and I was starving and I was worried about where I was gonna lay my head. And when you found out about it, you gave me a nice amount of money and I was able to go and put it down on an apartment and I moved in and I never could ever not Thank you for that. I, I will always thank you for what you did. Well, that, that's nice. That's my, my pleasure, Diana. And it's nice of you to say that. And, and listen, I'm very sentimental about all the people that I, I worked with over the years. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm just very sentimental about it. It was, it was a wonderful time and it worked with wonderful performers. And, and one of the reasons I, I wow. but, but one of the reasons I really wanted to, to have you on the show was to, for people to see something that, they, that I don't think they understand it doesn't is that is that people can I didn't know that you would agree with me on the transport thing I, I, I assumed you would disagree with me but it's beside the point which is that people can have very deep connections and very you know re real and, and intimate and, and relationships with each other coming from drastically different worlds mm -hmm. and they don't have to agree on everything Race wars. What's that? No. That's what we do in race wars. We bring different. You know I'm saying it's like they don't have to fucking utter the, the, the party reason. line. You have to think this way. And you have to think <laughs> that way. Otherwise, you must be a hater. Although, exactly. I know a ton of people who would who would kiss your ass and say everything that they're supposed to say and treat you like shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I um I do want to say that I think both of you are terribly off about trans kids in sports. All right. I, I want to hear Periel's perspective on that. Well, I, I can't speak to professional sports because I really don't know anything about it, but I can say that to assign a biological gender or, or, or to, sign, to assign a gender to a biological sex and then say from there that those children who are already suffering need to, especially when they're identifying as, um, let's say, female or male and they're biologically not, to then say that they can't play sports on the team where they feel they and believe and i also believe that that's who they are i think is really um ethically wrong well, and i also, question. wait question. wait let me finish and i also think that don't make that face mm -hmm. um and i also think that especially with these young kids 
what you're saying about hormones is not even true yet. No, it is true. No, it's not. And yeah, if you, uh, 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 no, it's not. And if you read, and if you read no. about this stuff on the AC, through the ACLU, there are numerous doctors and a lot of other people who are much more qualified than I am that support that. Ariel, is, is, first of all, it's not true. And I, I've, I've read a lot about this. I don't know about the hormone. The, the, the male body is different than the female body. My, my, <laughs> da my, my daughter, who is extremely athletic and thin as a rail, can do like one push up. My son, Manny, who's floppy and, 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 and um, uh, uh, husky, can, can already do 10 push ups. And you know, it's it is it is. But that's not playing. The question is this: that's not playing basketball or soccer. Oh, it's, it's yeah. strength. It, or you know, the, the female decathlon has lower hurdles, lighter shot put, lighter javelin. Uh, everything is different. The, the, body, the question is this: it, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you about these the the uh, sentimental aspects of it, the compassionate aspects of it. But the question is this: why do we separate men and female in sports at all? I think the reason is because it's not fair. No, I think the reason is, is because we've been brainwashed that there's a binary of gender and you're either male or female. You understand that if there was just one basketball league in high school, it would be basically all women wouldn't even play anymore? I mean, no, I don't know that. And I don't even- I don't You didn't know, know that? No, I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know how that's relevant to what I'm saying. What's relevant is because, because I'll bring out the fact that- the opportunity to play. No, what I'm saying how is about, relevant is that there's, we, we, separate, we separate sports. We try to make things fair. That's why we have weight classes well, in know, boxing. Why isn't it fair Hold that on. a child that's should it. suffer that's psychologically? Well, that's, a different, that's a different type of fair and not fair. What, there's one aspect of making why the competition- Why is that less important? Yes, I didn't say it was unimportant, but you can't just elide the whole issue. It's complicated. It's complicated. You, you it's can't complicated. just you can't just elide the whole issue of having uh, my high school has all uh, biological females, if that's the right terminology, and then they go to have they go to the wrestling. I don't know if it's female wrestling, whatever it is. They go to the and then the, the other high school has two trans women, and they kick our fucking asses. And th that's all. There's an unfairness to that too. We trained as hard as we could. But we never really had a chance. So I'm not. So th these are the no, issues. But know, the problem but is, the problem is, and I could come down on the side of saying, you know, the 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 protecting the emotional hurt is more important than I could. I could. I I don't know. I mean, I could. I could listen to that. I'm no. only just trying. I'm only just trying to say, people should be able to talk about it without being called hateful. That's my only point. I a hundred percent think that people hey, should Diana, go ahead, go talk ahead. about it. Yeah. I I don't. Think Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. If allowed, if allowed, I, I really do appreciate your heart. You have a good heart, but I've lived my life and you haven't. I know who I am and I know what it's like to go through the transition and transformation. I'm glad that my identification reflects female and I'm glad that I have a man in my life that loves me. But I also know that I am a very strong motherfucker. And if, 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 if I was playing sports with a, a in a female team i think that would be an advantage and a leverage that i have just just because of of my 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 dna i don't that, that's not that. fair wait a minute one more thing so when an alien comes from out of space not to compare myself with an alien from out of space and they want to just be treated like everybody else and so forth are we going to be that open i hope so but guess what they're still an alien. They have a whole nother DNA, endocrinology, et cetera. So wait a minute, I'm almost there. I'm gonna make my point. So since we're so unique, why don't we have our own unique sports? That way it doesn't interfere and have these, these kind of very delicate um, conversations because now, now guess what? Since you're so unique and you, you wanna use the same toilet, you got away with that. How about now start your own sports team, your own whatever, and be and then have, that's a whole nother way to make money too. So I'm just saying, like we can't have everything we want. I'm sorry, but it's just, that's the truth. And I, I'm trans, and I'm a trans woman. Yeah, and I'm sure that that's true. I'm sure that what you're saying is true, but I also know that. I have friends who have trans kids and I have a child who is a young child who has had tr 
classmates from the age of four years old who identify as the gender that they were not assigned at birth. And those kids are not starting their own fucking teams. Like those well, kids, I mean, they're still they're, not, they haven't even, they haven't even reached puberty. You don't that's really what I'm saying, find though. yourself until puberty. Uh, yeah, well, but, I don't mean find yourself, but I, when you're already that young and you're already encouraged to live your lifestyle or be yourself, whatever, um, there's a lot of psychological, um, you know, uh, just a whole lot missing if you don't have a therapist, you don't have all these things to go with that, okay? It's not just you, okay, I'll decide it's what I want to be. Okay, sweetie, no, you can form a team. Not, it's not that. It's okay. kids who are, they're trans kids, and they're young, and some of them are in second grade, and I have a friend who has a trans daughter who's probably in fifth grade and started identifying as a girl. And, they should, and then what you're saying is they should be allowed, and I would see on that level, like Norm was saying, that's different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, they're young. They're you know they're just kids. I'm talking about, you know, high school, college pros. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know about that, and I have a problem. Uh, Diana, with the thing is about starting their own team. I don't know if it's quite that simple. Say if there's just a couple of trans kids in the county, um, <laughs> they can't really have their own team or their own league. And if they want to play sports, you know, I I I mean I think to Noam's point, and then I made a point prior to that is. I mean, like anything else, you got to, there's two sides, there's two uh, aspects. There's a biological advantage, and then there's the kids' feelings, and both should be put into the equation, and then we need to debate and discuss. One thing I think we can all agree on is we need to be, we need, one thing we need to do is, is if we decide that these kids can't compete with the, with the girls, trans girls can't compete with the cis girls, if we make that decision, we have to be very, very careful not to promote not to do it, I mean, as best we can to, 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 to not promote uh, hatred, you know. And we also got to keep in mind the feelings of the, you know, the girls who are going to play against the other girls who are going to be getting dunked on and rustled and choked out. They got feelings, too. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I think that trans <laughs> girls are girls, and you have to... Oh, well, let me ask you a question, Perriel, because I'm not sure I understand your position. I'm not sure if you, if, with respectfully, I'm, I wonder if you've really taken... Uh, full thought of your position. Is your position, which one is correct? Is your position that there is actual no advantage of trans women over biological females? So we're talking about something which isn't even actually real, meaning they're not going to do any better or worse than any other woman. It's just random. It's just, or is your position that even if they are substantially superior in sports, and even if they do uh, overwhelmingly dominate these sports teams, it still doesn't matter. Which which one are you saying? My, my I feel like this is a trap. No, um, it's, it's not. I, a trap. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to demand it. Hold on. No, I'm going to I'm going to insist here. Um, that, my position that you that you uh, go that that you be logical, rig you logically better. rigorous here. If, are you saying it doesn't so matter if there's an advantage, do. or are you saying there is no advantage? What I'm saying is is I think that it is extremely dangerous and extremely harmful to exclude. So you're not gonna answer the question? No, I'm, I'm not gonna answer it in the way that you set it up because that's not how I think about it. I'm gonna well, I'm asking, it. no, because there are two, there are two, there are two so options. Can you answer the, it then? No, no, I'm getting upset. There's two options in the real world here. No, one, op one, one scenario is actually there is no advantage. In which case, anybody who doesn't want to let these girls play is a bigot. What, what, why, You're what? saying that. That's not what I'm saying. These are the only options which exist. The other option is, yes, we have to admit they do have a big advantage, but we're gonna, we want them to play anyway. Which one do you believe reflects reality? I don't, I believe that there is another option that Which also is, reflects reality. What's the third option? I can't think of well, uh, What I was trying to say. What's the third option? That I think that regard, I don't know which one of those is true. And I don't know- Does it matter to you which one is true? Not necessarily. So, I think so what matters believe, to me- So let's just, so, so, so fine. So let's just, so let's just- assume So can sake, I answer? Right. No, because I'm leading this, this part of the discussion. So let's just say- <laughs> because, 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 because I want, I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, Socratically hone in on something here. Let's take for the sake of argument, since you think it doesn't matter. Let's say for the sake of argument, 
that trans women are substantially superior to biological women in, in high school sports. You're talking specifically about high school sports. That's not what I'm talking about. What, you, then you tell me what you want to talk about. Which sports you want to talk I'm about? I'm trying to. All right, I give up. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something else. I love this. This is great. I thought that was compelling. To be but because, because I, I, what I'm, what I, I feel like where, where I'm no going one is, can so, tell, no is so one clear. Can tell, no one can tell me more about me and my lifestyle than me. I, because I I'm the try. only one here that's living it. I so so everybody, yep. so all these experts, let me tell you something. The bottom line is this. I am 52 years old, okay? I fought to, to have a place in a white school. I fought to have a place on stage. I fought to have a place in an apartment. I fought to have a place in, a, in, in line at the at uh, DMV. I fought to have my name and all that stuff change. I'm gonna tell you something. It don't come that fucking easy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Nobody, for, for, I wish you were there, Perio, to be my advocate, but I was my own advocate. And it took years and years of psychological evaluation, uh, self-hate, self-love, self-hate, self-love, um, being lost and so forth. And these kids are being raised and uh, right now with, with an open mind and parents are being open minded i think that's absolutely beautiful but it's dangerous too if they don't have the education behind it and if they don't consult with people like me who've lived it by the way D diana's book i read diana's book and she talks uh, uh in her book about her childhood things i i never had any idea about and i would i would recommend people buy this book it's available on amazon right i think um yes uh, i am not aging why should you I am not aging. But, water, but it's, but it's, to do. Great but it's not simply a book about beauty secrets and stuff. She also talked about her, her, her difficulties growing up trans. And it's, it's, um, it was pretty compelling. I have to yes, I gotta Thank check you that so out. much, Noam. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, I, 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 I think we have to wrap it up. I, well, Diane, where are you living now? You're not in New York, are you? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin. Were you frozen <laughs> this week? I, trust me, I thought I, 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 I thought I escaped the snow, um, but <laughs> it followed I, you down there. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I think it's harp, H A A R P. You know, they're doing something with this. <laughs> uh, that's what you think, dog. Uh, you've been down there not really. Diana, <laughs> Bill I'm, Gates I'm, making the snow. <laughs> what did you say? Quite... You think Bill Gates is making the snow? <laughs> no, no. I'm trying to hear what Dan said. Oh, okay. I'm saying I'm about your age, and I also am not aging. That's right. No, you're not. No, indeed. No, you indeed. look good. Yes, I yeah. do. I can't lie. I, would, I'm not, I don't believe in false, uh, false humbleness. <laughs> is, I look good. You do look good. Yes, indeed. Yes. Are you Italian? What are you? Jewish, just like your boss. Your old oh, boss. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. He has a type. There's a little melanin in there. <laughs> I already had a great time, Noam. I love you. I love you too. I, when, when you come to New York, you got to come sing with us. Hopefully, COVID's ending. I will. Yeah. The last time I came, you broke down and gave me a hundred bucks. Oh, what kind of interview? I, I, I wasn't even drinking. <laughs> he had a good year. This year was not quite as good a year as he had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You guys, I, you. I, and I, Diana, Diana. I, I, we got into it. I, I really, the whole reason I brought up the sports was just as a launching pad into talking about how you tried to kick the shit out of me. I, but uh, we got sidetracked actually talking about it. So I, I didn't want to ambush you with with that kind of discussion. But I, you know, I hope you don't it's mind. A very interesting topic, I think. Yeah, it is. It, it is an interesting topic. Yeah. No easy answers. I was trying to keep yeah. it human. Sometimes there aren't easy answers. I think that's the. I think that's the lesson that we can take is that sometimes life just ain't easy. Ain't easy. It's not easy. You know, we can't, can't always. Easy. We can't always have what we want either. That's true. I, I will say that if if um, research were to show that statistically trans women pre puberty or or with puberty blockers were had no particular advantage over biological women, then I think there's no issue there. Of course, they should be. They should all be competing. No, stop trying to make your point. You piss no, off but if if, there, if there's a substantial <laughs> advantage. Then there, then there is fairness concerns on both sides of that, and it becomes difficult. Quite no, difficult. just let us do our plugs and stop trying to start it back up. All right, listen. <laughs> all right, enough, enough. Way, we, we already plugged Diana's book one more time. I'm not aging. Why should you? And it's a good question. Why should you? That's great. And, and you know, I have another book. Thank you. I have another book coming out um, very soon this summer, and it's called The Supernatural Truth About Love. 
Yeah. Okay, Judy Bloom, stop writing all the books. <laughs> hey, this, hey, I'm gonna tell you something. This 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 um lockdown thing. Yeah. Got me in my in my in my in my in my head right now. You know what I'm saying? Got flowing. Hey, yeah, Di yeah. Diana, I do have a question. Yes. Oh Lord. Quite listen, often, you quite can often. Ask me anything you want. Quite often in the WA, you would go. You would be seen with a dude on your arm. Who would be who, who we would have seen the week before with a you know a, a, a biological female on his arm, and I don't think like he got back to he knew like he knew what what was going. What is with these guys? Are they? Is it a fetish? Ooh. Is it? Come on, tell me about it. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, now group. every individual is an individual. Right. So I can't say across the board that every guy or whatever, but and that it's a fetish. But what I can say is that um, I had I'm charismatic. Number one, I'm not ugly. Yes. But it's how I carry myself. And if I'm out there voguing and snapping my fingers and gas honey and doing all that, sounding nasal and just you know and looking like a mess, then I'll be treated that way. But because of how I carry myself, my demeanor, and my poise, um, I think that that uh, that means a, that makes a world of difference. So sometimes these guys did not know no. Oh, really? And sometimes um, they did not know, but still were. Uh, they did not know, and we did not have a sexual or some type of romantic connection. We just were just meeting, maybe a first date, and you would see that. But by the end of the night, they knew when they always came back. Yes! Hey, 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 queen. That's all I'm saying. But maybe, maybe, maybe I have that that I have that ability to to make a straight man think about it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So clearly, you and do. I'm I, I, and I'm passable. I saw, I saw, uh, I saw you conquer more than one. So of course, you know, you should have invited yourself over. Yeah, uh, he wanted to. You know, I he thought did. about it. I thought about it. Diana. What? <laughs> oh my God, honey. Oh I, I, my God. I, I figured that I'd have to give you a raise or something. I, I <laughs> you pay hush, pay hush money. <laughs> Juanita gonna get you. An apartment would have been a house. <laughs> he don't mean it, Juanita. I never would. You know, I've never felt that. Never thought that. Never seen that. But I will tell you that um, you are an incredible human being because. I had never experienced that level of exception, acceptance and love in my life from complete strangers, from people that were not family. And you and Sherry Pepsi Raleigh, um, uh, Karen uh, J, um, Anaya Day, Jiffy, um, yes. uh, 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 everybody. Uh, oh my God, I could just go on and on and on, just name everybody there. Sasha. Yeah. Um, even Rosna, you know, Rosna and I had a love-hate relationship. But she, <laughs> I can see she, that. She, she, she was just being Rosalind and being real. She's a church girl, country girl. And she wasn't about that, that punk shit. But Rosalind loved me too, though, on the slot, on the down low. <laughs> so I love me some Rosalind. Harry L knows Rosalind, so. Oh. Yeah, Rosalind, Rosalind ain't nobody to fuck with. I, I learned that great. lesson. Yes. But she's a beautiful soul. Oh, yeah. She's uh, great. Who, who else? Um, and then there was, um, what's her name? She could sing to Kim. Remember Kim? Oh, yeah. Kim Summersong? Summersong. Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to thank you again, Noam, for, for allowing me to grow as an artist and for not uh, being discriminatory and and uh, for being you there, to, you, you know, you know, you shouldn't have to thank somebody for that. I mean, I appreciate the the thing, but you shouldn't have to thank somebody for doing what they ought to do. So, yeah. yeah, well, again, um, you 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 really really are um, very special, very special, and I can't wait to to come back and perform. You and, are too. Um, you are too, Diana. And I'm I'm I really mean this to the bottom of my heart. I, I'm very happy to have worked with you and and gotten to know you and to still know you and happy every time I see you come in. Thank and you. um your substantial talent she plays a, a keyboard too by the way but you could never get her to do it really uh, to perform but uh quite talented so and and as you can see very 
you know, warm person. And well, I'm working on my stand up comedy, Noam. Oh, now, stand so you your better have lane, a spot for me at that comedy cellar, goddammit. I'm coming, I'm bringing it, God. <laughs> Stay in your own lane. Don't try to think <laughs> out. Fuck you. I'm, you're going to be in drag next. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up. Damn right. <laughs> yeah, son, you gonna do some two on food. <laughs> I'm gonna RuPaul it up, baby. Oh, yeah, supermodel, you gotta work, bitch. <laughs> All right. All right, All right everybody. We're, we're over time. Oh, was... Gerard wants to plug Race Wars. Yes, Race Wars. Right? Don't forget Race Wars, yes. <laughs> and the, you know, the mint comedy show that I just did tonight for the comedy cellar. Check that out. Yeah. And then I'm in Mohegan Sun this March, so check that out, Mohegan Sun Comics Comedy Club. You can find me on my new on my new hobby, uh, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. If you're on Clubhouse. Follow me there. Yeah, yeah. Clubhouse. Like, get off and get off Michael Che's fucking back. All right, enough of this. If you don't like it, you know, the, the, talk about the issue. You don't need to attack him. It's just a yeah. joke. Yeah, he's just doing a joke. Love Michael Che. Okay, uh, podcast at comedycellar.com for comments, suggestions, questions, constructive criticism, beauty secrets. Beauty secrets. Beauty secrets. <laughs> okay, good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night, Anna. I'm headed to the club now, nine o'clock show. Okay, have fun.